Ish. There's the problem. It's not doing much at all. This here, it's not a failure. It's a feature, not a fault. And I've never had one on quite like this. What the hell is this yoke? There's the problem there. Well, folks. Welcome back to the workshop. Today we've got a Bosch hammer on for a pair. A GSH11E. We're going to start with anyway. She looks a wee bit rough. Leads hanging off her. Somebody must have been in it already because the grommets pulled out. See what's wrong with this one. No information on it. Don't know why she was left in. Chisels in it. That's not the problem. I thought I might have been locked in there. Right, all the thing we can do is switch her on and see what she does. Yeesh. Right. Major problems. Hope it's not stopped gear teeth up here. Hopefully. That's just a bad bearing. But that sounds very bad. It sounds like there's been damage done anyway. So always when you're taking off this here we slide switch, prise it up from the bottom. The bottom pushes on, the top has two wee keyways. So these actually have to slide in. As you can see, somebody's already broken that one off. But she in love with one. Seen plenty of these going for a pair. You get them all the time. But they are a very popular machine, but you never post enough videos on them because you know, every time they come on, there's something different. Right, so it's not this bearing now. She doesn't seem too overly slack. You get this armature out anyway for a start. See what kind of damage is done. Main thing is we want to know what the armature is like. Now that has been rattling around for a while. Going by that brush, you know. It's questionable whether this can be saved or not. First thing is we want to check the armature because if that's damage needs to be replaced. We're on to about three or four hundred straight away. Not a good sign. Normally when you see it broken on one side like that. Normally an indication that it's been arcing and sparking. Same way as we bevel on this side. But that's more than likely because this thing's rattling around so much. This motor is actually moving inside. And I don't mean round and round, I mean back and forth. Not good. That is just not going to be worth fixing. M teeth are okay. But it's broken this one. I don't think this is going to be worth fixing anyway. I could probably get it running, but it would sound terrible. It's done a wee bit of work anyway. There's a wear on them com bars, so it's not like it's done nothing. But the question is, why did it do that? What do I do? Do I keep going 
Let's see what the crank's like. Try to get it running with this. If I do that, I'm going to have to get some sort of service done on it because bits of them teeth are going to be inside here destroying the hammer mechanism. So it'll have to be washed out, which is going to cost money. So that, even with very minimum work, is going to be costing about 90 or 100 euro. And for a machine that's going to sound terrible no matter what I do now, don't know if that's going to be worth it. Plus, why did it do this to begin with? So maybe the bearings on the crank could be gone, the needle bearings there. Maybe they need to be replaced, or this bearing down in here. When I open it up and just see what the gear's like. There's a lot of grease here. I would safely say somebody's been on this already. And they already know rightly. That this is probably not worth fixing. Yeah, there's the problem. Somebody's been on this all right. I've done something badly wrong. Now oh, you can already feel everything shredded inside. Look. Even the corn rod, it's all chewed up. This is the problem. Somebody's rebuilt it without the needle bearings. Nothing on there at all. So that was switched on and she just started wobbling. So much so, she smashed up this. So that's the problem. Wouldn't have been a problem. Somebody had to put the needle bearings on. So this one's okay. These ones are missing. And it also needs a new crank. I'm going to mount the greases on this. Somebody has been on this here before or else put barely anything into it. I don't even know what kind of grease that is actually. It's very light. What to do? I think I'm going to chance putting on a second hand crank and just seeing what it runs like. Obviously, with some new needle bearings. Chance just giving that a quick wash. It did get slapped about, but only on top. The bottom still seems okay. And there's nothing we can do with the head of the armature. This could run and sound smooth as silk, which it more than likely won't. But more than likely, it's going to sound terrible. But it will still run, even with them teeth damaged. It's just going to sound terrible. So there's going to be a little bit of cleaning needed, because them teeth are actually off now. They're in here somewhere. I have to wash this out, but I'm not going to spend much time on it. I'm going to give it a quick wee wipe down and I'm going to leave the motor alone just see if I can get it cleaned up and no more. Okay, cleaned out somewhat. I'll leave some of these parts, I'm not going to wash the whole thing out. That's going to be absolutely pointless, so I don't want to waste too much time on it. I will need a new set of needle bearings. Second hand crank, I have got one. More worn the better, because I don't want to be throwing away a good one. This one is actually not too badly worn here. Hopefully worn teeth will actually match the old one a little bit better. But there's a wee bit of rust on this as well, so handy to use that one up. 
I'm going to have to change the brushes as well. But at least if this doesn't work, I can take them out again. It's not going to be worth stripping it down again. Let's take the needle bearings out. Right, we'll see this, we'll get it sorted. Now, there's no point in me changing anything else, like O-rings or needle bearings up here, simply because this was worked at before. It was stripped down and rebuilt. I have no idea what was actually put onto this. Somebody could have put a full service kit onto this, and new seals and needle bearings, to all I know. That green seal down in there actually doesn't look all that dirty, so it could well be. So it'll be pointless changing that needle bearing because it could be brand new anyway. Same as the O-rings and the piston and striker. They could have already been renewed. Same as everything else. So there's not much point in changing anything else in it. At the end of the day, this mightn't work at all. So don't want to spend too much money at it. All we can do is stick her together. See what she does. Tidy up that lead as well while we're here. The boy who owns this thing is really kicking himself. Or at least, if he ever did the repair. Because that is a big boo-boo to make. He would have known the second I switched that on as well. I'm assuming so anyway. I would hope he doesn't keep on running it regardless. Because a lot of the time somebody does these things for the first time. They don't exactly know what it should sound like to begin with. But can they just keep on running it? That's a lot of damage, simply for not putting on two needle bearings. Let's make sure they're on this time. I mean, really, you should know. When that gear goes on, it shouldn't be moving, apart from round and round. It doesn't sound too bad. Imagine it's going to sound a lot worse when it's running high speed. that a wee wipe not washing it out but just give it a wipe just in case doesn't seem to be any damage anyway imagine when this is ran it was only going to be run for a few seconds before they heard the damage don't think it's going to have enough time to actually get any of the debris up inside it. That in there. The proper grease in there too.
This one's just been awkward. Here's me fighting to get it on, taking everything out to try to get this pipe in again. Won't go on right. He also had that on wrong. It's meant to be the holes at the top. This thing's already becoming more trouble than it's worth. Now we can put this back in again. Stop it falling out again. I'd say this thing was actually serviced because that's a fairly clean felt sleeve for a 12 year old machine. Generally, they get filthy and all the grease will start leaking through here and that'll become saturated. But that there's fairly fresh. Looks like a new one, just put straight over the top of a dirty cover just. Right, before we put the side handle on, let's give her a test. I'm dying to know now, this here has rolled off the machine. Here we go. Yeah, it doesn't sound great. Definitely not. That was a waste of time. She's running and she'll hammer. That is just too much damage. It's just not worth doing much more than that there. Fix it right, you would have to replace that armature. And that armature is going to cost 280 euro. Plus, putting in a new armature, you're also going to want to replace that crank with a new one. So you want another 30 euro again for that. So for then two parts, it's going to become a 300 euro repair. Plus, under that sort of hassle, you will be putting in a service kit. That'll probably be another 100 euro. You're on to 400, more than half the price of the machine. Just not worth it. So this GSH11E ain't worth fixing. So if you're ever servicing one of these, Make sure you put on those two needle bearings, otherwise you're going to scrap the machine. This one, I'm afraid, is done, and it's not even worth my time taking them parts back out again. All I can do, all I can really do, is put a small lever fee on this and cut my losses. So at the end of the day, taking out them parts is going to cost me more in labour than what they're actually worth. That's her, not repaired. This is the M18 FN 18 GF 2020 18 gauge Milwaukee nail gun with Brad Nailer. I don't know anything on it, so let's test her out and actually see what she's doing. Not doing much at all. 
she moved an in. Right. She's kind of making the right noises, but not doing anything. I would guess she's out of air or out of nitrogen gas. She's lost pressure in the back chamber. There's no air to actually drive the nails forward now or drive the piston. So might be able to regas this as long as I still have my little fitting. Yeah. So give us a go. Now these things can be a little bit hit or miss to be honest. I've done a few of them, especially the stiplers. But sometimes the customer comes back a few weeks later saying it just doesn't last. So We'll just have to see if this is going to work or not. All we can do is try. Honestly, these things, they're just not meant, they're just not made to last. If you think that D wall's bad, these might be consistent kneeling, but when they stop, that's it. So same sort of setup as a cookie, as I've said before. Motor, gearbox, driving this here pan wheel. The pan wheel turns around slowly and drives the piston back. So if this is pressurized under high pressure air or nitrogen as it's meant to be, when you pull the trigger, the pressure in this fires the pan. Once the motor and gearbox it actually drives the pan back. So it never loses pressure and keeps that pressure inside the back chamber. That's just this motor and gearbox and this gear wheel up here actually compresses the pun or the driver back into the compressed air again and compresses it even more and that's what actually gives it the firing force if this is no pressure won't drive the nail because the pun doesn't come out you'll just hear clicking then as it actually goes around the motions to push back the pun which is already back first thing you do before you do anything but you don't know for certain if this is still pressurized you want to open up this here we grub screw and release the pressure inside the chamber here because there's a lock on the pin up here to stop it from firing you want to disengage this lock to get the pin out before pressurizing this you don't want to undo that lock if there is still pressure in here that's it no more pressure Want into the back of here. Disengage that lock. We want to take the pin forward. Drag it forward, releasing the suction as you're doing it. Otherwise it'll just spring back. Take it all the way forward to there. When you do have it apart, it's worthwhile checking these little pins or rollers here. Sometimes they can wear out. Now you can't buy them from Milwaukee, the individual pins. It costs a couple of euro a piece and this entire head as well this actual ratchet head you can buy that separately it's about 40 or 50 euro gearbox all of this here apart from this head that's also available but it's all one piece and that costs about 100 quid motor and controller same thing cost about one or two hundred euro and everything then up in the head itself the actual chamber not including the wee plunger Everything else, if I just take off this motor assembly, 
the entire head up here chamber pan even the door that's all one piece can't buy any of that separately pan brakes can't replace it your door brakes you can't replace it it's about 300 euro for that there part but it's handed you can get these pans because they do sometimes wear out and if you replace them before they fail completely you do save your pan but these ones these ones actually look to be okay so I'll leave them alone for now it should be all we need to do we'll get this thing gassed up pressurized up to 8 bar and see how she runs if that's not high enough then I'll tweak the compressor to put it up to 9 or 10 bar that should hopefully do it Sometimes you can't have to put on higher pressure. The stippler, because you're putting on two prongs, needs higher pressure. But I think this one is an 18 gauge kneeler. So I'll say 8 bar should be alright. Right, moment of truth. Well, is that cured? How about that? Nice one. Shooting everyone. Nice one. This one Milwaukee 18 gauge cordless Brad gun. The M18 FN 18 GS. Up and running again. We quick modification on an airline fitting. A BSP thread in the end of it. Allows you to regas the gun up to about 8 or 9 bar. That gets her running again. That's her. Now, next up, an old rupee sander. Where is she? Rupees Milano, Italy. An SSPF. No year on her. But an old enough model, this. First thing, does she work? does work and there's the problem she's broken one of the paper clamps pacing this is all right as well this might be a wee simple fix paper clamps and ease actually just screwed on two screws the whole clamp assembly comes apart. And look, the rubber's actually worn out in this as well. Yeah, maybe not actually. Still see some of the grip there. It's not that bad actually. Right, let's see if I have one of these in stock or not. Still have a few bits and pieces for them. There are the little rubbers there, the grip, a few screws, actual grommet for it as well. That's what we're looking for. A 
hole clamp. The same one. It's been changed, but it has the same one. Yeah. I still have one left. They're costing 15 euro each. Don't need any other bits, just this here. Get rid of that one. I'll just give us a quick clean with the compressor. A wee bit tidier looking. Very quick and easy repair this one. Then again it's only quick because they have the parts on stock. That's it. This one, I don't really need to change it. It's not broken and the plate's not wearing out or starting to crack at all. So that, should do the job. I'll keep this man sanding. These older ruby sanders. Were fantastic. These half sheet sanders are a big heavy duty thing, like the old Makita ones. Very robust, very reliable, but not sure if the modern ones are quite as good. I know some of their polishers just ain't the best, or at least ain't the best for the money they actually cost. But these things are worth every penny. 15 euro for that wee part, which is up and running again. That's her. Here's another wee oldie. An old trend router, quarter inch. This is the T5 EL from 2001. 23 years old, this one. My customer reckons it's something to do with the speed control. She's actually not working at all. If it is the speed control, it might not be worth replacing it. That there cost well over a hundred euro. So I don't know if it'll be worth putting it on or not. If it is the speed control though, we could just bypass it if we want. You can just have it run on full speed. Let's face it, most boys using a router aren't going to be using the speed control all that much, generally. They're left running full speed. But this one, at over 20 years old, could easily just need a set of brushes. So, and also check them first. No, it's not the lead. That's brand new, basically. The lead's been changed before. Not worn out, but they're also not fresh. Nah, speed control. So it's not the brushes, they should still be running. Plenty of meat on them to actually get it to run. 
There's no damage on the speed control board. It's not going to be the tackle because it would still start up even if it was damaged. So what have we got here? We have a power coming in. So the red ones must be the field, so we'll just check the field wiring. Right, the field's okay. It's not the brushes, it's not the field. Can't really test the speed control. It's either working or not. The only way to really test it is to weigh the thing direct and see if she runs. We'll not do that just yet. First, I'm going to check the switch. We don't want to be doing an awful lot to this. So I don't know if the armature is definitely still good. There's the problem. Nothing to do with the speed control. It's just a broken wire. That can be easily fixed. So this is a nice simple fix. Actually that one's about to break off too long. That side's barely even been held on. And when you're doing this, don't leave yourself short. There's only so much wire here. But if you do become a little short, you can just put the field wires down onto the top of the switch and rewire the lead wires down to the bottom. So if you do run out, you're not completely stuck. Larry, these two don't really matter all that much. Both the blue wire, so generally it's not going to be polarity sensitive on the speed control. If it mattered, they'd have different coloured wires. Generally, it doesn't matter what you're going to live or neutral. If you're not sure, just keep them the same. That should hopefully be all we need to do. Tuck those wires on. So is that just the easiest repair today? No. What now? Uh, there's always something to keep you in hell. power going through the brushes you know if they're not making contact with the armature because you'll not get continuity across it so they're okay the field we've already tested I suppose it still could be the speed controller but it's unlikely there's going to be a broken wire here and a speed controller unless that broken wire somehow cooked the speed controller but I don't think it is somehow So we messed up on here. It's 
sometimes if you cut these too short the actual screws can be too far away and they don't go in the hole because these are insulated they don't go in the entire way but they're attached and this is the switch itself so it doesn't pass that it actually is Right, switch itself has actually failed. And I don't think I have a hope of having one of these in stock. This thing's over 20 years old. And it's the old trend, not the new. This would have been a decent enough switch. I'm not even sure if you can actually still get it or not. We look and see if it's still available. It's a good brand switch. Right, let's see if we can get one. Right, it is still available online. Places are shown up for sale, but it costs over 30 euro for just a contact problem. It might be more beneficial to actually just fix this instead of replacing it. That's if we can. Or because one side still working, which you can do is actually bypass the broken side and so take that lead and wire it direct and just have it switching on the one side and we just have it switching the live. That's what a lot of machines actually do. We'll see if we can do anything with this. There's the problem, anyway. It's absolutely jammed full of dust. I'm not familiar with this switch, so I don't want to just automatically put an airline to it. Sometimes when you do that, all the bits just fly out, wee tiny springs and levers, never to be seen again. I think I might be alright with this one. Give us a wee blow and then we'll put a bit of contact cleaner onto it. And that should do. So just check, yeah, check the contacts in the bottom. It's funny we switch this actually. Right, so the contacts, that slides back and forth. Just making contact with this side all the time. And she's only making contact with this side when she slides forward. Right, they could drop out. Sure you don't drop them. So still a bit of stuff down in there, but looks what. Hopefully it's just dust and not burnt. So that lead's burnt away. There's nothing I can do. Looks to be just dust. Perfect time to run out of contact cleaner. Perfect for a fine brush. Nice. 
What would be wrong with that? It's a lot better. I think that'll do nicely. A little bit of silicone spray in there just to keep things moving. Delicately put this back in without bending anything. Right. Hopefully that should do the trick. The question is now, is which way is on and which way is off. So that way it should be on. Take it that fits on there. Yeah, so there is a wee ball end on it. That fits under here. So when this is down, it's going to be forcing it the other way. So that. Which way am I? That would be on, but it's forcing it that way. So I need to have the switch this way. Get that ball in place and drop it down. Now if this is on, I should get continuity. Wrong way around. But at least it works. Just flip that over. So now that's on. Spot on. These wee teeny tiny wee screws back in again. And that's it. That should do the trick. Hopefully, get it running. Alright, so the on position was down. Try to give it back the same way we got it. Otherwise, the customer. Trying to use it the wrong way around, not a big deal, but it could be annoying for him. We're trying to slide the switch down to switch it on when it's meant to go up. Like that and your lead. Right, second time lucky. No, does that sort of? Much better. And the sounds with the speed control works too. That's her. One twenty year old trend T five EL one quarter inch router. Fixed up again, repairing a broken wire, and the switch cleaned out. That's her. Nothing wrong with the speed control at all.
but if you do have problems with it if it costs over 100 euro you might be better just wire it and direct instead of actually replacing it now an instafix a warranty instafix an akita cordless jigsaw and now for a warranty repair or at least that's what the customer thinks customers only bought this a short time ago says it's not working great and he's left it back he's actually just been given a brand new one so he's left happy he's not going to be waiting or anything left this in it's not working now this is a common one i used to get all the time so common i actually put videos up in the past about it showing people what's going on i thought most people got it by now but apparently not this here it's not a failure it's a feature not a fault you should probably know straight away when you see this thing Kita cordless jigsaw is the brushless version. The DJV182. Customer says speed control is not working at all. Now, when I say this is common, nearly anybody that buys these things nearly thinks the same thing, especially if you test it before they actually use it. These here have a soft start. Whenever you switch it on, sorry, lock button, she runs at one speed. Won't go any higher. That is not a fault, that is a soft start feature. She'll run at that lower speed until you start cutting and it meets a resistance or meets a load. And then it'll ramp up the speed. It allows you to actually get a nice gentle start on whatever you're cutting so it's not jumping around the place. That's a feature, not a fault. Show you what I mean. But it is an annoying feature if you don't actually want it. But there is a way to turn it off. So before you cut, low speed, but whenever you start cutting. She ramps up. That allows you to get a nice gentle start. But if you don't like that feature, you can disable it. Now, unless you read the instruction manual, you're not going to know how to do it. Because at the end of the day, there's just a speed control, a switch, and an on button. How do you do it? All you do, switch it on, turn down your speed, turn it back up again. Blinky blink. No more soft start. That's all there is to it doesn't work once you've already been using it you have to switch it on and then do it same thing if you want to turn that feature on you can just do the opposite to switch it back on again so if I've been using it I can't just adjust it to turn that feature off you have to switch it off first it has to be off turn it on turn down your speed turn it back up again blinky blink So there you go, nothing wrong with it, not faulty at all, it's just a feature on this here jigsaw. It's handy when you need it, but a little bit annoying whenever you don't. And if you don't know how to switch it off, it can be very annoying. It would be a lot handier on Makita if they would just have these sold out of the box with that feature turned off. So anybody that doesn't know about it is none the wiser, they don't leave it back in again thinking there's something wrong. If anybody does know about it, they can look at the instruction manual to see how to switch it on. Because it does tell you in the manual. This one, I'm going to leave it turned off. At least that way. Whenever this goes back up into stock, nobody's going to be buying it and leaving it back again. So that's her Makita DJV 182 with nothing wrong with it. Ready to go back up into stock.
that's her if you have one or if you've just bought one don't be sending it in for a warranty repair if it doesn't go through the speeds and if you switch it on make sure it's not on soft start to begin with that's her next up is a makita meter saw as the ls1013 and i've never had one on quite like this no caps on it at all no caps on either side and the brushes are jammed down inside the motor you look to be rusted on but imagine the thing wouldn't start and that's because the brushes are rusted under the holders he's probably tried to take them out broken the leads so the springs and leads are gone just the brush left inside now and he can't get them out to put in a new set so he's left them here for a pair probably lost the brush caps as well but that's not a big deal fix this it's actually quite simple pull off the motor take out the armature put a screwdriver on the other side and just knock them out I could nearly guarantee that the armature in this should be fine also pull off this wee arm lock lever but of course it won't just come off because the brushes are still stuck in I'll be jamming on the insulation washer on the back of the armature so I'll have to prise this up it's never easy doing all this with one hand There we go. Now she's worn and she's blackened. That's just from it arcing across. That should be okay. Make it a wee rub down with a sanding block just to tidy it up. This is the butt we need to fix. Right, much fixing on it. That head screwdriver is all you need. You can easily do this now with the motor head removed because when the armature is still in there, the brushes are pushing against the com bar, they can't move in. Put the motor off, they can move in now, no problem. One, two. As you can see from the corrosion on them, they were just rusted on. Fix up the holders now. They still have a little bit of corrosion on them. A wee small flat file is all you need. All you want to do is just free them up. So the next set of brushes can slide in and out no problem. Same on the other side, you can actually see the corrosion on there, it's probably just been sitting in a damp shed or something for the last number of years. New set of brushes, CB153s, that should all, and that should be all this machine should need, just make sure they go on and out nice and easily now. Check that before you refill it. Spot on. Try to get off these wee hard spots. That's also corrosion. Just a rougher sanding block is all you need. Where the brushes have been sitting for the time it's been stored. I'm 
No. Nice and shiny. That's not essential. It'll run regardless of this is dirty. This just might save a few sparks, basically. We fit rear deflector. Bearings are good. Drop that back on. Now you can go ahead and fit the brushes with some new caps. So you can't see the old ones here. And now, what would have looked like a lost cause is now running as smooth as silk. Look at that. Simple as that. Very common thing for these old Makita saws or any saw. They're lying up a long time, the brushes corrode into the holder. They might work a little bit whenever you first take them out, but after a little while, they'll just stop running. That's the problem. The brushes have corroded and stuck into the holder. Unless you take the motor off, sometimes you just can't get them out. The leads just break away, they're in that tight. You either smash them, pull off the motor, and knock them out from the other side. But that's it. Nice, easy, cheap fix. Now, lastly, we have a wee Bosch machine here. What the hell is this yoke? thought this was a Bosch. Old Bosch NICAD drill maybe, or an SDS drill. What's this, an old die grinder maybe? Yeah, a die grinder. Oh cool. It's actually a quick grease die grinder. Look at that. How old is this thing? She's from 1999. Proper made in Germany one. Never seen one of these before. Just goes to show Bosch is making all these quick attachment heads for a long time. Never seen one like that before. Never seen a 45 degree die grinder before either. What is she? A GEB 1000 CE angled head die grinder. Let's see what she's doing. She's not doing anything. She's variable speed as well. Right, let's see what we can do with this. It's basically, like most die grinders, she's a four and a half inch grinder, a modified head basically. So that there is actually the switch of the old GWS 8 stroke 115. We have the grinder armature up on here, and then the head then just going to be modified with a spindle taking the drive down here. Big massive speed control wheel, totally different speed control on this thing as well. Looks like 
burnt there, look. No. There's the problem there. It's as simple as a blown noise suppression capacitor. There's just a wee cap here. One thing it's doing is actually just filtering out electrical noise from the grinder. So if you're using this here close to your radio or something like that there, it's not going to interfere with the radio. When they blow like that, best thing to do, just take them out. They're not actually doing anything for the grinder at all. Yeah, simple to take it off. Or is it? Yeah, there we go. Comes out. And they blow generally to go with the bang. For right, whatever reason, that's probably got a fright whenever this went. The really old tube ones are the best crack. Because even whenever they come in here after they've blown, they actually blow again every single time you plug them in or switch them on. They come into the workshop and you don't know what's wrong, you just plug it on and switch it on, and you get a big massive bang out of it. That's just the capacitor gone. Just helps start your day with a fright. So that's blown. It's all swollen up. Blew out there. Three leads on it. No, oh, two leads, sorry. It's going to the speed control. So yeah. You just take that straight off. Get rid of it completely. I don't think I'm going to have one like that anyway. I'd be surprised if you can still get that one as well. Look online just for the crack here. Supposedly still available, but nobody has them in stock anywhere. So for now, we're going to do without. It's mainly for noise interference. It will run without it. But it does also smooth out the power going on to the armature. So if the motor starting to go bad without the capacitor, it can spark a little bit more. Cause the brushes to wear a little bit more, but only slightly. For a machine that's old, it'll do fine without them. Should be around there. Yeah. It's awkward the way that wire tucks underneath the actual screw hole. Now, see if she runs. No. I should have fixed it. Unless she blew the fuse and the customer didn't change it. Yeah, the fuse is actually gone. That's disappointing. Should have checked that first. If we had to change the fuse, we would have got a nice exciting bang whenever we switched it on first. Now, let's see if it works this time.
There we go. One Bosch die grinder. Running. But she's not running, right? Sounds very stuff. So just a steel ring to help hold this on. Looks like it. It's actually a plastic gear, is it? No, it's not. It's metal. Right, what way is all this now? Back in here again. Oh, this is awkward. That's just the way she runs. A little stiffer than this one, but there's a rubber seal. It's going to be a wee bit different. Actually, it doesn't feel too bad. Nothing wrong there either. That one's a little free. It's not going to strain the motor. There's nothing actually wrong with that at all. Unless this is just in my head. They sound alright. Nothing wrong with the bearings. That's just because of that angled head. She just gives a different tone.
see if it sounds any different because whenever I actually took that out, one of these screws was actually loose. So unless it wasn't putting enough tension on one of them bearings maybe. That's her. That's as much as I can do. I don't think that sounds exactly right, but bearings aren't gone. Armors are still good, so unless the gears are just starting to wear. But I would say it'll be hard to get parts for that thing now. Running. The customer can keep using it. That's the main thing. By the looks of it. This thing doesn't be taken out too often anyway. So that'll keep this boy going. One Bosch GEB 1000 CE angled die grinder with a noise suppression capacitor removed. Anyway, that's her. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this here long tool repair video. If you're liking the tool repair videos, as always, give us a wee like and a follow down below. Cheers. Thanks for watching, folks.